No problem. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys. Thank you so much. Again, I I want to um send out the apologies for the delay. I understand what it is to stay. I mean, like this for over an hour. I'm sorry about it. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to waste your time. Okay, I'm going to make sure that every other second after this minute is going to be worth it. Okay. Uh, I want to also re-emphasize that this meeting is specifically for those who want to and who view forex trading as a profession. So if you if you don't want to trade as a profession, this meeting might not be for you. It's okay to sit down here and check your appetite. Okay, to see if forex is something you want to do. Okay, but what I'm going to be giving you is for those who have engineered their brain that I want to trade forex. I want to make money with forex. I actively or passively, but I'm interested in this thing. Okay, so in this meeting room now, okay, because uh, everything I'm going to be giving you is deep. Okay, I'm giving you real content, right? Most of the information I'm going to share with you, you can go anywhere, you won't find them, most of them. Okay, and then what I'm giving you in a one day's workshop is something that if you pay for it, you, you buy it. Okay, that's what I'm giving you in, in just two hours. So I'm going to share all those slides with you and discuss them with you. Okay, so I'm giving you real content. Real content. All right, again, I'm Bennett, Bennett Mario Mokocha, okay, popularly known as e Sojo. Okay, and don't ask me where the name came from. It's about just so that you don't get confused when you hear somebody say e Sojo said this or said that. Okay, because I believe we are all going to now move into the trading room. Uh, we have a group on Telegram where all the traders sit together. We share opportunities. Okay, because I might not be looking at a chart and then you are, you are looking at that chart. You see that gold is going to appreciate. You share it and we all make money. Right? That's the trade community. Okay? So, uh, without talking too much, these are all the things I'm going to do. One of these is a full course in the university. Mm -hmm. Okay, one of this, all right. So I, it means I'm going to be really fast with what I'm doing, also. Okay, so you have to flow with me. You have to flow with me. If I'm too fast for you, slow. Uh, you let me know so that I slow down a bit. And then take notes. Okay, take notes. If you want to maybe capture the screen, you can. Okay, take notes. Keep some of those information. You might need them. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna be taking some theories because they are essential. There are some of the things you need to know. Okay, but I won't spend too much time on that because what I realize is that as you continue to trade, all these theories you 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 get to know them. Okay, it just becomes a part of you naturally. All right, so my 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 goal is to get you into the market and make money. All right, that's my goal. Okay, so. Yeah, again, the disclaimer, trading is risky, right? It's not something that you do with um, half knowledge, okay? You, you, you've got to be sure that any decision you're making in the market, you know that you have your self conviction. all right? Don't let anybody sweet talk you into making any financial decision. And as such, my, my slides, that I'll be sharing here now are not in any way suggesting that you should buy anything or sell anything. Okay, so I'm not giving you financial advice in this meeting. I'm teaching. Okay, so everything I'm doing is for education purpose. All right. If I if I exhaust the time, these are some of the contacts that you can use to reach us. We have shared this uh, this slide already, so I won't waste time with that. Um, majority of you here were at the workshop, at the seminar, okay, so uh, some of you came to the office, we have our office at ShopRite, right, so we're going to be having subsequent meetings there. After your workshop, we're going to be having meetings 
over there at the office. Okay, we're also going to stream them live for those that are not around. Okay, but we'll keep on, I'll keep on teaching you every day. Okay, and these things will be streamed live. So you continue to follow, all right? Because it doesn't end with the workshop. There are, there are lots of things. If you look at our, our brochure, you see the courses, the course outline. There are a lot of things to learn, okay? But we can't learn all of them in one day. What I'm doing here is showing you how to start, okay? How to start and start well, right? Especially uh, up in your head, to start correctly. Okay, these are objectives. These are uh, the things we're going to be doing today. All right, I'm going to try my best to make sure I can deliver these things into your head, or well, especially those of you who are new traders. Okay, those of you who are existing traders, uh, I'm sure you will still get something. Okay, why do you want to be a trader? Why do you want to be a trader? Remember when I started, I said if you don't want to trade as a profession i'm into medicine and it is my decision to be a doctor okay so it, it is also my decision to trade forex all right if you don't make that decision to become a trader a trader okay a common trade of all those who are seeking refuge uh, in the financial market everybody wants to make money of course okay What's the draw? What's the draw of the incredible challenge to become a consistent person? Because they know that a lot of people don't trade properly, they don't trade well. But the average person believes he's smarter than average. Most people believe that way. I am, I am smart, I am intelligent, I should trade and I should make money. So they, they, some people quit their job to do this. Okay, so there, there's a draw. All right, what's the ultimate reason uh, why people want to be traders? I, I, I made this article in one of uh, the, the publishes I made. Okay, uh, that is that is the I think that's the major reason we want to be free. When God created us from day one, He designed us to be free. Is it not? That's the original reason for creation. But a lot of us are held bound by the unbelievable cord of the corporate world. You are sending a master who you are answerable to, and you cannot do anything on your own. You are not free. You can travel where you want. You can't do anything on your own because you're answerable to somebody. Okay. Now, as a trader, you can you can see there that umbilical cord for good, and you make money. You make money. Okay. Uh, so a trader is a rebel against the system of corporate slavery institutional lifelessness and system fatigue. A trader is a pursuer of self-identity. A trader wishes to make, to take ownership of his own outcome, lay his own path to financial and spiritual prosperity. A trader is a designer and an architect of his own future. A trader by nature is what man's original virtue but that has been forgotten. Can you take that statement? Well, a trader by nature is what is man's original virtue. Okay, that's what I was talking about. That's man's original virtue is to be free. Okay? okay, and that is freedom. Free from the shackles of an authoritarian system, free from debt, slavery that consumes most of the people in the Western population. Freedom to determine one's own journey in life whilst not being at the mercy of a multinational formless culture. So when you're having a challenging training day, which always comes, always remember, remind yourself why you want to be a trader. 
They want to be a trader because you want to be free. I'm saying this because uh, this journey is not easy. Okay, so always remember that you are fighting for freedom. Our youth try to fight for freedom. Okay, and uh, we know where we are now, so I'm not going to skip this thing before you. The fight is never is usually never easy. Usually never easy. All right, so that's what I'm, I'm trying to tell you. But there are there are lots of people who now trade comfortably, confidently, without any fear. And they live on the proceeds of their trade. I have a friend in the island, guy speaks on his computer every day. He has a wife, he has kids, that's what he does. Okay, you're going to meet some of these guys. Because there are opportunities here, right? You can live anywhere, you can walk anywhere, and then you will never answer to anybody. Never answer to any boss. Okay, but many people aspire to these things, but just few succeed, right? Just few. Okay, uh, again, my goal is to try as much as I can to raise men that will be emancipated as traders from forex trading. That's what we're doing. Okay, that's that's the ultimate goal. All right, to to raise people who are going to trade forex and make money consistently is is not easy, but it's possible. Okay, if there is a system that you can follow, I mean, which is readily available. Good teacher. Right, the system you can follow. I believe you should be able to collect that system and make money with it. That's what that's what all of this is about. What I'm doing here, all these slides, is to follow the process. We are, we are following, we are observing. I think forex is strictly for those who view trading as a profession. That's what we do. Okay, why do most uh, most people about 95% fail? Okay, look at that list. All right. Uh, the game is hard, planted uh, for most traders to lose. Okay, a lot of a lot of the, the way the market is created is designed to create confusion. So once you start, if you if you if you're not organized, if you if you don't organize yourself before entering into that market, once you start, you will lose focus and lose money. So you're going to be among the the five percent. We used to have a slogan initially that was saying that uh, join the five percent for the five percent that makes money. Okay, so a lot of people uh, fail because the game is, is actually hard. Okay, it's hard, and I'm telling you why it's hard. Because when you start to learn, I'm going to teach you a lot of things. When you start to learn, you now start to feel that you know so much. You know where the market is going, and then you can make predictions. And you are always right. That's where the downfall begins. Okay, so uh, that game is difficult. Nobody can unravel it. Nobody can. So you just need to follow your trading plan. That's all. Right, I'm going to give you a simple trading plan in this workshop that you can use. All right, there's, uh, there's ignorance. A lot of people ignore a lot of things. Yes. It's ignorance. There's lack of discipline. There is inadequate preparation. Uh, they're taking too much risks on each trade. Okay, a lot of people take. If you if you risk one tenth of your account size on any one trade, you're going to get blown out, no matter how good a trader you are or you become. If you risk one tenth, meaning if you have one thousand naira and you are risking hundred naira on each trade, you will get blown out. You will get blown out no matter how good you are. I'm very good with mathematics. Because there's something we call you're going to have clusters of good luck and clusters of bad news. 
when your first sound body comes, you get blown out. Okay, so uh, if you risk too much on any one trade, I'm going to teach you how to risk just a little with that calculator you have installed, just a little on any single trade. All right, so you don't risk more than that. Okay, yeah, emotional and thoughtless trading. Some of you just open the computer and you are feeling happy today and you play straight. Okay, you just uh, play straight, you know, and the market is not known for its generosity, all right? Uh, sometimes you might be lucky, but it is never known for its generosity. Okay, so you, you get blown out if you do that. All right, so using a system without an edge is a problem. A lot of traders, the mistake a lot of traders make is that they don't define their edge before they start to trade. You have to know what your edge is. When I say edge, in simple English language. Now, if I have a coin and I want to toss that coin, I have a coin and not toss, flip. I want to flip the coin. I'm supposed to have a coin, but it's in the office in my cdc all right now if i want to flip a coin and i i, I the both sides have equal weight i'm sure you know that it means that if i flip that coin i'm going to get uh 50 50 on the average that's what's on paper okay 50 50 is what i will get let me use something else heads and tail 50 50. If I flip this thing, assuming both of them have equal weight, each time I do it, uh, head or tail will either appear. But I know that after 100 flips, I'm going to have 50 50. Now, what an edge is, is this. If I now add some weight to one side of this thing, so that anytime I flip it, heads will appear, it now means that this thing is no longer 50 50 is now maybe 60 40 or 70 30 in favor of head now that's this 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 is the issue most traders have they they have not defined this edge then they go into the market you need to know you need to know what will add weight to one side of your coin when you have defined it you write it out and tell yourself, this is what I want to see, this is what I want to see before I place the trade. You know that ultimately, you make money. Ultimately. Now, when you start to trade and you have not predefined this thing, you know what happens? You, you, you get lucky sometimes, but ultimately you lose. But if you have done this, sometimes you lose. Because no matter how good no matter what you do sometimes the other side will still appear that's the 30 percent it will come up there's no way 100 percent will be the head no matter the amount of weight you put on it except you don't flip it if you flip it it there's there's almost you know the chance that both of them can appear now i want you to get the message what i'm teaching you now is the backyard of what is happening. I'm going to take you now into the market, but this is this is the common sense explanation of what is happening there. So if I tell myself that I must see A plus B to place a trade, then I want to make sure A plus B is what is, what is adding weight to my coin. If I don't see A plus B, it is it is it is insensible. It is thoughtless of you to pick a trade. You don't see when you see a plus b and you take your trade can you lose yes you can but you know that if you keep on placing that trade each time a plus b appears ultimately you will make money and then you make like 10 20 30 percent by the end of the month that's what we're saying here that's why i keep on telling you forget those people that tell you that they want to multiply your money it's not possible because there is no hundred percent system you go into the market, you see most of these things. I'm saying. Okay, well, I'm going to give you everything you need to generate any technical analysis system. Everything you need from scratch.
So you can design your own system. But I want to assure you that you can never get a 100% system. I tried it. I told myself that I, I, even if it kills me, I will get one. I almost died. You can't get a 100% system. Okay, but we make money. We make money. And then we accept that there is no 100% system and we make money. Again, I'm not very good with um, talking about theory. All right, so but just understand what's happening here. F O R is from foreign, and then E X is from exchange. So that's what it is, foreign exchange. Okay, that's that's why we call it forex. So forex is not a word on its own. It's just uh, you know it was coined from foreign exchange because calling out foreign exchange is always difficult. So we call it forex. Okay, and as you know, it's the largest market in the world. You already know that. Yeah, transaction takes place simply when one currency is traded for another. Okay, very simple grammar. Okay, and then uh, look at Euro and USD. Uh, when, when, when you are trading currency, it's different from buying shares. In buying shares, you are buying just one thing. Maybe Apple, Google, Facebook, you're buying one thing. But when you're trading in the forex market, you are trading one thing against the other thing. So you're not buying one thing. That is why you can make money when the market is going down. Okay, because if the market is going down, it's assumed that the chart was flipped. It's assumed that you have changed Euro USD to USD Euro. Okay, that's what it, it almost means. All right, so don't get confused. All you just need to do is tell your, you just need to ask yourself, is it going to go down or is it going to go up? So if you know that it's going to go down and it actually goes down, you make money. That's what I'm trying to say. So you tell yourself, is it going to, is it going to go up? If you know that it's going to go up, let's say you see the A plus B and you know that whenever this A plus B appears on your chart, it goes up. So when that happens, you you buy it. okay that's what we call it it's called long you take a long position all right but when it's you know that whenever this a plus b appears it goes down okay you take a short position that's what we call it short so you you sell you hear somebody say i'm shorting euro usd or i'm shorting gold or i'm, I'm, I'm i have a long position on on cruise okay so long means buy short means sell Okay. Yeah, forex is really large. Forex is big. You can see uh, what forex is compared to stock. The New York Stock Exchange, the capacity is $22 billion in a day. All right? It's $22 billion in a day. It's just one, it's a tap. It's a, look, at, look at the flow of the water there. It's, it's just a tap compared to the spring. That you get from forex i've explained this uh enough in the other class there are lots of advantages for trading the forex market many advantages the commissions are very little because of the competition among the brokers okay it's just like the bank i don't even remember when it's any bank you can't open an account with any bank unless you have hundred thousand yes there was a time you cannot open an account with any bank unless you have ten thousand okay but now they advertise how much? Zero. You see, you see what happens there? Commissions and everything drop drastically. That's what's happening in the brokerage firm. Okay, so there are many brokers. So the commissions are almost zero. IT markets, I told you, is the best in the industry. Their, their commissions, their, their, their spreads are almost zero. Sometimes when I'm scalping, I don't see any spread. It's 0.0. .0. But when maybe it's not a high, you know, uh, when many traders are trading, you might see 0 0.1. Okay. So uh, there's low cost of transaction. Uh, yeah, you don't have to, you, they, don't, they don't hold you down to say you must take a particular lot size. Okay, so it's flexible. You can take as much as 0 0.01. Very little. Okay. 
The market stays on for 24 hours, five days. Okay. From Monday morning, Monday, from Sunday night, okay, from Sunday night to Friday night. It's Sunday night because those in Australia, they are already, their banks are already opening on, on Sunday night here by 10 p.m. Sunday, 10 p.m., banks in Australia are already open. And then when that happens, the forex market begins. So those in Nigeria can start trading from Sunday night if you want to trade that session. Okay? Sunday night, it starts because they are ahead of us with almost 12 hours. Okay, so they, they, they are about to begin by 10 p.m. Nigerian time. And then it runs. And then London follows, New York follows like that. So it continues like that until Friday, 10 p.m. Friday, 10 p.m., New York closes because New York is about four, six hours. Okay, they are about six hours, hours behind. So even when we have closed the bank by 4 p.m. on Friday, New York is still running all the way to 10 p.m. because they are six hours behind. So currency don't have this issue. All right, they, they can trade on Saturdays and Sundays. Well, I don't trade crypto. Okay, I don't trade crypto. All right, leverage. <laughs> leverage is important. Okay, I'm going to explain what leverage is because it's important that you understand what leverage is. It is the ruin of many traders. Leverage. Don't take the leverage that the broker gives you. Don't take the leverage that the broker gives you. The broker allows you to real, to kill yourself. Don't take it. If you're trading, if you're trading an account for City Forex, we don't give you leverage. But you know why the broker is giving you leverage? So that you can, it's like giving you a knife to kill yourself. You don't need leverage to make money consistently. Now, this is what leverage is, guys. Now, leverage is, you, you, in your account, you have $100. The broker allows you to buy a, a one barrel of crude oil or 10 barrels of crude oil might be worth, let's say, $10,000. But you have just $100. Now, what the broker allows you to do is, he allows you to buy it. So it's like saying, hold this my money and give me this crude. I am I am take, I'm taking that crude is going to appreciate. If this ten thousand dollars worth of crude appreciates, let's use naira. I have hundred naira in my account, but the crude I want to buy is ten thousand naira. What I have in my pocket is hundred naira. What I want to buy is ten thousand naira. I now go. And then the, I meet the broker. I say, okay, take this 100 naira and give me 10,000 naira worth of products. We do it now. Give me 10,000 naira worth of products. Let my boys supply and bring it back. Then I'll pay you. Is it not? That's what's happening electronically. So you take the, you he takes the $100, goes with the, uh, with the crude oil. Now he's having so much, he can make so much profit. That's leverage. That's leverage. There's a quote that says, uh, give me a prop long enough and if, uh, uh, and uh, give me a pivot and give me a prop long, long and strong enough, I can single-handedly move the world. Nobody can move the world. But if you have leverage, which is that uh, pulley, you, you should be able to move the world if the rope is strong enough. So leverage allows you to do more than what you can normally do. That's what leverage is. Is it good to take leverage? Yes, it's good to leverage on, I mean, why we can make a lot of money because of the leverage. But if, you know, too much of everything is too bad. And it's available to you, that is the problem. When, you know, you know the, the problem some traders have is they are now free to make their own decisions. As a child growing up, everybody is there to scold you, to stop you from making your decisions. 
Even up to now, there are some of us that cannot make some decisions because we have our wife, we have our children, we have our parents, we have our guidance. In the market, nobody is going to scold you. Nobody's going to watch you. Nobody's going to monitor you. You are free. You are free to make any trading decision that you want to make. You are free to buy with any size you want to buy. And then what happens? A lot of people abuse that freedom. Till today, that is the downfall of many traders. You want to take a trade. You know that if you take, if you, if you have 100 Naira, you can't afford to buy something worth of 10,000 Naira. You can buy something worth of maybe 500 Naira, and then you make a profit and make maybe 50 Naira or 100 Naira profit, but you want to buy something worth of 10,000 Naira so that you can make a profit of 10,000 Naira. Meanwhile, you have just 100 Naira in your, in your pocket. That is the downfall of many traders. That's the greed we are talking about. Okay, so what I'm, what I'm driving at is very simple, guys. I'm saying, don't take the leverage that the broker gives you. When you open any brokerage account, they give you 500 times of the money you're putting in. You can kill yourself immediately, very fast, you see. That's what I'm telling you, it's like they are giving you a knife. So I want you to implant all these things in your head so that when you start to trade, you can fix these things from the grassroots. Don't use leverage. Professional traders don't want leverage. I, there are some brokers that, in fact, in the USA, in America, our traders there, they don't use leverage. As a citizen of America, you are, the government stops you from using leverage. That's how bad leverage is. Go and check it. They defend their, their people because they know that leverage will kill you. I have some friends that want me to give them a, a, a brokerage account registered as a Nigerian so that they can use the leverage. These people are, people are, they are in America. My cousins, my friends. Okay, they want to trade with leverage. The government stops them from using it. So I'm trying to tell you that leverage is bad. And I mean it. It's sweet. I can take $100 and flip it to $1,000. Why? Because I have leverage. But I can take $100 and lose it immediately. Why? Because I have leverage. So that's the point. So please take note of that thing. It's very important that you understand that part. That leverage kills. This is the market hierarchy. I won't talk about this. This is saying that all the way from the base, you have retail traders all the way up. I'm sorry about uh, this. The, the TV in the office is even better than what we had here. So, but um, some of this information you get to know them as you start to trade. They're not so important. And then these are the, these are the major trading sessions. Okay, these are the trading sessions we have. So, if you want to trade, the market starts to move around this time. What makes the forex market move is the bank. When the bank activity starts, the market starts to move. So here, we, we have the same time as London. Sometimes there's a, there's a one hour difference. But London and Nigeria banks open at about the same time. Okay, so if London is 8 a.m., it means that Nigeria is 8 a.m. When the Nigerian banks open, forex market starts to move. All right? So if you're in the right place, that movement will fetch you some money. I have, I have setups that I take during the asian session they i call them limit orders i take them and then the market triggers the thing and then when london session opens i just make some profit and i close it before new york session begins okay so new york session is the next one it starts around uh, 1 p.m i've designed this thing so that everything will be nigerian time okay so around one o'clock nigerian time your chart starts to move if there is a change in this time, the broker will inform you and tell you that there is a one hour difference or thereabout. So in fact, the training uh, platform we use uh, will show you that New York session has just begun. Okay, so uh, you need to know all those information. Why? Because once all New York traders open their trading platform and start to buy and sell, the market starts to move. 
So you have to be prepared for that kind of movement. So if you're trading a low time frame, you have to protect yourself. Okay. And then um, there is the Asian session. This one is the least traded because uh, New York and London makes up the largest um, population of traders. I mean, day traders. Okay. And then uh, there is a time when London is still ongoing and then New York banks will open. That is the highest volatility during the day. Okay, so the London banks are still, they, they are all on their trading deck, they are still trading, and then New York banks now start. So once that volume comes in, London is still ongoing, it's heavy. Okay, so the least, the least volatility, when I say volatility, I mean uh, movement in the market. Okay, because sometimes you can sit down like this and be waiting and waiting and waiting for the market to move, to get to your maybe target, where you want to cash out from. Okay, so... I'm saying that these movements will happen more when New York is on or London is on and then, okay? And then sometimes Asian sessions too, all right? I, I usually enter the market when it is quiet and I usually leave when it's quiet, okay? So sometimes I'm, I'm up early doing my analysis and then I take limit orders or I, I set alarms. Did you take that app for setting alarms? You, you took that app for setting alarm, have you? I have another one on my system, though. Uh, but there is a mobile app that, that is call levels. Call levels, yes, for setting alarm. So you can you can just take maybe Euro USD or GBP JPY or crude or gold, and then the price where you want to get an alarm, you 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 press the price. So when it gets to that place, it will alert you. Even if you're at work or anywhere, you can now know that okay, market has gone to this place. It's time for me to buy or sell. So that's the essence of the alarm all right so those are the time frames. these are major currencies uh major currencies are usually currencies that have usd okay usually all right there, there is more to it but they are usually the ones that have usd and guys let me tell you what i do i'm going to tell you what i do now real quick real quick open your ears and catch it see now among these major pairs i don't go outside them I don't go outside there. I'm telling you what I trade now. I don't go outside. This thing is not even showing. Someone, okay, you can you can pass this one around so that uh, you can see the slide. Now, among among these uh, these um, pairs, okay, Euro USD. That's what I have there. Euro USD, uh, USD JPY, USD card, USD GBT. Um, USD Chef, AUD USD, and NZD USD. Now, these guys are when we call them major pairs, we're saying that they are the ones that are traded the most. Most traders do the analysis on this chart, and then they are always ready to take trades on this chart. Okay. Okay, so you, you can just um, pass this one around. Okay, so you see, these are the major pairs, and then there are, there are eight of them. Okay, there are eight of them. I think one is missing. Uh, the, there is... one that is not here usd card chef chef aj ak okay this is complete sorry that's that's okay okay now see what i do okay yes they are com that's complete but the the current the currencies itself is eight so when you add usd now becomes eight okay so now, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is this. See what I do. Hmm? There, are other, there are other currencies. Go to the next slide. There are other, there are other um, currency pairs. We call them minor. Minor is when USD is not there. You are now taking 
maybe euro against gbp ahead and then all of them like that okay so usd against card nzd against jpy and then all of them those are minor pairs now see what i usually do guys i will they, now when you take all these eight currencies there are eight currencies you can take note of them usd gbp euro jpy card chf australian dollar that's aud uh and then um new zealand dollar which is um card all these things have they all have like um they have like a traditional name okay just like you have naira they all have their names all right usd is uh greenback okay it's greenback or they call it box dollar all right um aud is australian dollar okay australian dollar is called aussie okay new zealand dollar is called kiwi k-i-w-i -I. okay pound is, is sterling pound or sterling okay uh chf is swiss franc swiss franc that's chf okay uh uh we we also call, uh, we call canadian dollar looney card it's called looney okay uh there are eight of them yen japanese yen all right and i might not mention okay so i, I think those are uh, the eight of them now see what i do with these eight pairs i want to i want to tell you now so that you start understanding what we're going to do i think i don't like to waste time when i get there if you connect i will just give it to you see these eight pairs the common sense what i trade see what we're going to do now these eight currencies what we trade is the economy of the country mind you there is there are the ones we call exotic pairs like the south african rand and all these other guys nigeria is by no means listed on all of these things i'm, I'm, I'm saying okay so uh, you cannot trade nigeria even as an exotic pair you can trade south african rand Okay, so that, that's what we are fighting for as, as you know, youth. In case you don't know what is happening in this country, all right, we should be getting more than we are getting. Okay, but uh, unfortunately, we are not. All right, so guys, this eight it becomes currency pair where you make it to something else. Okay, so these eight currencies they are the they are the biggest economies in the world. Okay, they they have reserves. They are the biggest. When their central bank opens their mouth and talk, the currency market moves. So these are the eight big economies. Okay, America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, France. That's um, all these guys. Euro. Okay, France, UK. They are all Euro. All right england pound so the biggest countries the biggest economy now let me tell you what we do when what sometimes japan might be having some crisis and japan it, it will make japanese yen to be weak so when japanese yen is weak if america is okay is stable we can pick up american dollar and trade it against japanese yen see that's what i do and i've been making money for many many years a simple it's a simple technique there are a lot of things i'm supposed to cover i've not, not gotten to what i'm telling you now is simple is simple english i'm going to teach you how you can know which economy is weak which economy is going to be weak this week and next week on your chart okay i'll show you all those things so what we are saying is very simple which 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 countries are having issues now and which countries are doing very well now? Everything is reflected on your forex trading chart. So now we now say, okay, this country is okay. This country is not okay. We trade this country against the other country. Simple as ABC. Don't try to make anything complex. But do I, do I risk all my money in it? No. Why? Because Trump can wake up and tweet something and the market is the opposite way you see you see what we're saying now 
if I if I if you if you watch my if you watch me trade, you hardly see any losing trade. You be tempted to say, guy, put more position size. That is, take the leverage. You be tempted to to tell me to take the leverage, but I don't take it. I can't take it. I can't take it. Okay, because I I want to I want to feed my kids. I want I want to. I want to take care of everything with this business. So I can't gamble. But when you think consistently. Okay. Uh, so yeah, these ones are the exotic, uh, the exotic pairs. You have um, Danish Krone, you have Norwegian Krone, you have Swedish Krone, you have Turkish Lira, you have Singapore Dollar, Hong Kong Dollar. You know, all these guys, we, we trade them as well. Okay, this is how you read a quote. I'm not going to waste time on all these things because you begin to know how to read a quote very easily when, once you start to trade. Okay, so how you read a quote is um, the, the first currency you're seeing there is there's supposed to be a pointer for you. The first currency you see there is the base currency. Okay, the first one there is the base currency, this one. All right, that's the base currency. And then, uh, uh, I mean, this one, rather, is the base currency. Okay, and this is the, the quote currency. Why we call this one the quote currency is because this price you are seeing here belongs to USD. So this is a quotation for USD. So we call it the quote currency. And then this is the base. Base is just as, is a simple grammar, base. It means that that's the OGA, or that's the one at the base. That's the main person. So there's nothing to eat. Why we call this other person the quote currency is because if I change this price, it means that the price of USD against uh, pound has, has changed. That's what it means. Like once I change it, it means that it has changed. Okay, so now in, in layman's English, if I say, uh, let me use a pen. If I say, you know, USD versus Naira, so that you can understand what's happening here. Okay, so if I say, uh, if I say USD against Naira, right? And I now say equal to 460.5. For example, now this this makes sense now, right? Makes sense. It means that one one American dollar, that's the quotation for one American dollar. Okay, that's quotation for one American dollar. Now, if you open a simple forest chart, what you are going to see is you are going to see something like um the the name will be on it USD uh, NGN Nigerian Naira. And then on this side, you're going to be seeing 460, 461, 460, 463, 464, 465. That is the price. And then on this side, you're going to see time. Maybe depending on the chart, you can see January, February, March, April, May, June, July. You can see uh, 10 a.m., 11 a.m., 12 a.m., depending on the chart you're looking at. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to open a simple chart uh, to quickly illustrate that point. Okay, so that's the way uh, that thing is written. I'm going to come back. Let me see if I have a uh, hair. This, this is a simple chart. Okay, so see what, I, what I'm trying to say is when you open your phones now, you find out that if, if it was over here, that's where they're going to write the, the currency, USD against NGN, and then they will tell you what time frame it is, okay? And then the current prices will be highlighted here. Current prices will be highlighted. So now, what you are going to be seeing here, if you open a Naira chart against dollar, is maybe 300, Three, uh, 310, 320, 
all the way like that to force it. Do you understand what I'm saying here? So this is the price you are going to be seeing. Because when you want to place a trade now, you have to place a trade based on the price. So that's why I need you to understand what you are seeing. The, what is here is time. What is here is time. Okay, so if I have a, there are different types of charts. There is the one hour chart. There is a one hour chart, the chart where each of these candles you're seeing here forms within one hour. So if you open, if each candle here forms within one hour, it means that this time frame should be between maybe yesterday and today. Do you understand? So if I open a chart where each of these candles is one day, meaning I change the time frame to one day, what I'm going to be seeing on each of these candles, it means that it will take a whole day for one of the candles to form. So the time frame here cannot be two days. It's going to be like three months. Do you understand? Yes. So what you have is simply a, a price against time. All right. So I'll just, just keep it somewhere. You'll use it later. Okay, so uh, now you, you this now begins to make more sense to you, right? Make more sense to you. If I open a chart of GDP against USD, you're going to see something like one point something. Why? Because pounds and dollar they are almost the same. It's almost one. You get what I'm saying? They are almost the same, meaning that um, when this is 1.5, it means that the, this one is almost, uh, let's say dollar was against Naira, when dollar is, let's say, 460, pound is 840, around that area. Does it make sense? When It means that if dollar is 840, if pound is 840, is bigger, and then dollar is uh, four something against naira now i'm trying to make you get it now it means that if i am taking dollar against pounds i'm going to be seeing something like one point something you get you get what i'm trying to say so that is that is the price when buhari came he told us that he's going to make our own two to be one that's what that's, that's what happened now am i lying you, you did not you didn't hear it he said he's going to make it one now. Of course now. He told us that when you carry USD against NGN, it will be equal to one. What is it today? 400 and something. And do you, do you know that it's pegged? The CBN is paying heavily to peg it as positive. The real what, considering Nigeria's economy, of Naira to dollar is crazy. You, have you heard when CDs used to be thousands, you know, CDs, you, you have millions of CDs and all those things. You, do you, do you, did you hear that? Uh -huh. That's how it is in Nigeria now. You know, it's not a joke. One paint of uh, rice, the highest currency of the Nigerian Naira cannot buy it. It's crazy. I mean, it is alarming. It calls for concern. And that's why you have to take this thing serious. I don't make money in Naira anymore. I don't even keep money in Naira. I, I don't do it. Naira can drop at any time. It doesn't mean that you should keep your money in cash, but it's better to keep your money in dollar. It's easy. Go to your local bank, tell them to give you an additional account opening form. They give you additional account opening form, you tick dollar or tick pound or tick euro. They will add it to your current account. You see it in your mobile app that you now have dollar. It's simple. It's just a one page form. Any bank you're operating with, just tell them additional account. Remove the money from there and put it in the, 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 the dollar account. You can't be keeping one million. One million is going to be worth less. When he hit us, that period crude fell. You know what happened to people. People had millions of naira in their account. You can't buy anything with it anymore. Something that was 360 moved to five something. You have, you have lost almost 40% of that money. So that's why we're saying, move it. Move it to dollar. It doesn't, 
when I was still in school in the university, what I used to do is when I save up to thirty six thousand naira, I will go to the to the bus stop and collect hundred dollar notes and keep it in my room. That's what I used to do before I had a, a dumb account. Okay, so there are usually two prices that you are going to see when you look at the code screen. Okay, when you look at that, that Nigerian Naira, when you look at it, there is, you know, when you go to the Malam to, to uh, maybe change your dollar, if you have dollar to, let's say you want to buy, they won't sell at 46, they, they sell at 48, right? Am I right? Yes. Now, when you want to sell, they won't sell at 46, they will sell at 44. Do you understand that? So I'm trying to make this thing very simple so that you don't, because we will have drama. What you have to offer. Okay, so that, that's what bid and ask is in simple English. Okay, so that, that, that thing is called the spread. One person is willing to pay, uh, it's like going to uh, an Apple shop, and then the, the price tag on the Apple is 50. It's 50 naira. Okay, and instead of paying 50 naira, you go there to pay. They say, oh, no, you can't pay 50 naira. You pay 51 naira or 52 naira. That is called the spread. Okay, and then you have to avoid spread as much as you can. Especially if you're using a low time frame. You have to avoid spread as much as you can. Okay, and I told you that these things are not much anymore because of the competition among brokers. They are reduced. Okay, so you have to avoid uh spread as much as you can okay so that's that's bid and act bid is that gap the difference between the bid and the act is the spread okay that one naira extra or two naira extra you're paying on that apple is called your spread the extra 200 naira i'm paying to the malam either in my favor or against me whether i'm buying or selling it's called the spread Okay, so when you come to the market, sometimes you can execute your order here and it will be triggered up there. When that happens, it's a spread. So you can be seeing that the market is at point A, but when you now say buy, you now see that the thing bought up, not there. That thing is a spread. And then a, a wicked broker will take it even further. So if you open a position, your money will be moving like that. The difference now is how much will your money move? 10 cents on my account. If I have a 0 0.10 um, lot size, which is leverage, right? As that pip is moving, if it goes in my favor, I'll have $1 profit. As that pip is going, if it goes in my favor, I'll be having $1 profit. It keeps on increasing. It goes 10 pips in my favor. I'm going to have as much as Hundred dollar profit, I mean ten dollar profit, because it's one dollar per pip. So what we are looking at here is the movement is per pip. So the lot size you take is per pip. If you open your account, you now protect your account and say, I don't want to lose more than two dollar. That's why I said you can hardly do well with a hundred dollar account. It's better you change it to cents, so that you can take more trades. There are lots of trades that you cannot, except you are using maybe a one minute time frame. There are many trades that you can't trigger with a two dollar stop loss because your stop loss will be too tight. Okay, your stop loss will be too tight for you to have that such trade. So most people who trade with hundred dollars are gamblers, right? Because they are they are risking as much as ten dollar on one trade. If you have a hundred dollar account and you are using a 0 0.10 lot size, which is one dollar per trade, it means that hundred pips that thing moves. So that thing you are seeing, it moves. That thing you are seeing that is changing like this. It moves. It can move as much as 150 pips in a day. Open GBP pairs. It moves as much as 150 pips in a day. 
for somebody who has a hundred dollar account, if that one and fifty pips is against you, your account is blown out. Is it not? What if it moves hundred? What if it moves in your favor? What do you have? You have one hundred something dollar profit. Is it not? That's how we make money in the market. So as that thing is moving, the, what your job is, is to say, as you're looking at this candles, what do I need to see to know that, okay, anytime I see this thing, the market usually goes up. Then you now give it space. This, that's why I'm, I'm telling you what peace is. I don't waste my time on any subject. You now give it space, like 10 pips, and say, okay, I'm accepting 10 pips. So I'm going to use... 0 0.01 so that if this trade goes against me i will lose one dollar okay 0 0.01 if it goes against me i will lose one dollar and i'm giving the market a a, a a a liberty or a space of 10 pips to go up if that thing doesn't doesn't continue going up or if it doesn't go up and it goes down four pips i will have minus 40 cents. It goes down 8 pips. I'll have minus 80 cents. Continues to go down, gets to minus 10 pips. I will lose $1. That is a brilliant way to trade. What happens if it goes up? When it goes up, you start to make money, right? You start to smile. And you start to screenshot it. And show your friends you are making millions in forex so you are now a forex trader okay so you you make money it continues to appreciate you keep making money that market can go on and on okay but usually what we now say is at least if you are risking one if you risk one dollar make sure that anytime the market is in your favor you are taking at least two dollars that is two times of what you risk all the strategies i use will give you at least two twice your risk so if you have a winning strategy that is 50%, and anytime you win, you are making two times your money, you ultimately make profit. If you are going to lose less the time, and you are losing just one, you make more money, you, make, you, you, you win more of the time, and you make twice. You make money. You, does it make sense? See, when you when you are losing one one dollar each time you are you are wrong and you are making two two dollar each time you are right and you are right more than you are wrong you ultimately make profit that's the mindset you are going to work with but if you if you feel that okay this thing has come out and then you you put in big loss size each each pip now now what's more and it's too heavy on your account. It's too heavy on your account. It will affect you. It doesn't mean that forex trading is not good. You just didn't trade right. Okay, and I, I always tell you, see, you don't have any reason not to trade right because there is money for you to trade. There's money. I keep on telling you that part. There is money for you to trade. Get the skill. Learn it first. There is money. Okay, even if you don't know me from anywhere, go online. There is money for you to trade. There are lots of banks. You need to pay just a subscription fee. That subscription fee proves to them that you know that you are a good trader. That's how you're paying the subscription fee. And then you trade the money, you make profit with it, and you share it with them. Blue FS will take 50 50. They give you a $50,000 account after you have, you have done a subscription of around 50,000, right? You get the capital and you start to trade $25,000 rather. You start to trade with it. If you make a profit of 10%, which is $2,500, you share it 50 50 with them. So you keep, you keep $1,250. And then how much do you do you deposit as your subscription fee? 50k. 
and then now at the end of the month you have one thousand two hundred and fifty uh, dollars. That is almost six hundred thousand. What my point is this: forget about making money. Your hundred dollar can never make you rich. Your two hundred dollar can never make you rich. What will make you rich is the skill you learn. So we have roughly thirty minutes more. Okay, so I've talked about all of this. What a peep is, you know what a peep is. Okay, tomorrow we're going to go into the market. I will show you. I don't think we can cover it now because I want to make sure everybody is impacted. We're going to start from that point. Okay, there will be no logistics issue again. We already know we don't have a slide. Okay, so if possible, I think we can come with the other um, TV so that you can be seeing what I'm showing you. Okay. Uh, then uh, we'll start early, right? Then I'm, I'm going to be showing you now with your empty fours, the ones that you have, how to use most of those apps. Okay, so let me just go through this slide. This is everything on this slide is theory, but these theories are important, as you will agree with me. They are very important. Okay, so yeah, lot size. I've talked about lot size. If, if you take 0 0.01, your money, your each peep movement is worth 10 cents. That's all you need to know. There are a lot of calculations on these things, but there's no point telling you all those things. Okay, what about mini loss? 0 0.1. Each movement is worth $1. If you take one standard lot size, each movement is worth $10. Okay, I have an account that has as much as $1 million. It's not my personal money, so that you don't kidnap me. I'm trading for a UK bank, and I told you guys that you can get money if you know how to trade. All you just take is your share from the profit. Now, one standard lot is too small in that kind of account because one peep movement is just $10. So it is your account that will determine your position size. So if you have a if you have a five hundred dollar account, you can't be trading the same lot size as somebody who has a one million dollar account because each peep movement, if he opens it on your account, your account can get blown out in one second. Okay, this is how we make money. It's very easy. You know that this thing is going to appreciate. You buy it, it rises. You can see this is 533 points or pips rather it's pips so it means that if you're if you're trading this market with 0 0.1 lot size and it appreciates with 533 pips as we have on the screen you have made 533 dollars profit on that account what if you are using cents what if you're using um uh, micro 0 0.01 it means that you made 53 53.3 uh, dollar right is it money is money 53 dollar is over 20,000 naira so capitalize on the movement of the market forget about the lot size lot size is going to kill you capitalize market moves enormously Every day the market is running. Every day. So capitalize on that movement, not on your lot size. Because you might feel that, okay, you don't want to wait for as much as 533.50. You want to wait for just five feet and multiply your account in five feet. Five feet can go against you easily. Okay, so simple thing implemented can change your trading life these are some of the simple things that a lot of traders uh neglect and that's why they are still in the pool of losses and they are looking for they are looking for the holy grail strategy see even if you call your little brother to open a forest chart and place trade 100 he's going to win some do you agree he's going to win some if he's risking one one percent of your account eventually he might make money do you agree he doesn't know anything about forex just teach him what i just if you so buy and sell is easy open your phone you see buy and sell that's all you don't need any certificate just a click 
Now, why is everybody looking for strategy? Because they are gamblers. They want to be 100% correct all the time. They don't want to be uncertain. They don't, they don't want to, they want to be sure that when they come into the market, they know, see, what this pie chart is showing is, this is what makes up a successful trader, right? We're saying that you need trading psychology, you need a, a working strategy, and then you need to manage your position size. That's the leverage I've been talking about since. Uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.01. It's not a must. Now, this 0 0.01 and all these things I've been telling you about, that's the work of your calculator. You're going to tell your calculator where you are in the market. How many pips is your stop loss? You're going to tell the calculator what you are trading. And then you're going to tell the calculator how much you have in your account. And then how many percent you want to risk. Those are the four informations that you give your calculator. Once you give your calculator those information, it will tell you the lot size to use. The biggest radar for amateurs and greedy traders is that they do not press their calculator before opening a trade. They go straight to the, to the market and place trade without consulting the calculator. So it means that if I see somebody who is trading correctly, if I see somebody who is trading correctly, see what happens. If you look at all their losses, it doesn't exceed that percentage. The calculator is going to give you 0 0.03 sometimes. It's going to give you 0 0.12 sometimes. It all depends on where your stop loss is. If you have a wide stop loss, it means that you can't use a big position size. If you want to reach me too. But if you have a narrow stop loss, right? You're making up for it with what? Size. Okay, so a narrow stop loss on that same trade, that person will, will trigger a bigger position size. His movement is going to be worth more. For you, your stop loss is here. You consult your calculator. Your movements are going to be little. The market can go down and go up. Eventually, you make money. But if you want to capitalize stop loss and high position size, boy, you lose money. You lose money. Okay, so to become a successful trader, you need a, you need a strategy. I won't take it away from you. You need a strategy. That's what I've been talking about, the edge. You need something that you can look at and say, yes, this is what I need to see to play trade. There is none of it that is perfect. Warren Buffett knows. There is none that is perfect. Next is your position size, money management. What is the solution to position size? What solution to a strategy? The solution to a strategy is sit down and do a back test. If I, pre if I present you a strategy as I will tomorrow, you go back and do due diligence. Look at the chart. Scroll back, scroll back, scroll back, and observe how this thing have worked out in the past. And then come back in real time and look for the opportunities and place the trade. Once you have that, that's your strategy. So anytime you see that, and if I tell you that, okay, when this candle is like this and this one is like this, trade. That is your strategy. So anytime you see it, you place the trade. What if the candle is not like the way I told you, and you place the trade and you, you make money? It happens just this time. Uh, yes, just this time in my work. But that's also the ruin of a lot of traders. That brings us to trading psychology. It's the biggest. It's the biggest. 60%. And a lot of traders neglect it. Trading psychology, you know, is easy to neglect. But everything I've been doing with you since morning is trading psychology. I'm teaching you how to trade correctly, how to think correctly. I do this technically because it makes up 60% of what you need to, to make money. I can easily open your... your 
your empty falls and start to show you, okay, buy here, sell here right now. Okay, and then we go home. You clap for me because you're going to make money. We go home. You go back and go and try, it won't work. And then what happens? It looks... Okay, so that's why we are talking. With time, we'll stop talking. What we'll just be doing is looking at the chart, interpreting the chart. That's what we'll be doing. But for now, let's get this thing right. Let's get it right. Okay? And then if you have the opportunity to stand before an audience to talk to them, emphasize on the need for thinking in probabilities. That's what I've been doing since morning. The need to say that you don't know if your trade will work out. You don't know. But you know over time you will make money. See, from day one, I'm giving you a seminar that is worth $4,000. A lot of people go, the bank, they go into the seminar to learn how to trade pro uh, properly, to become professional traders. From the, that's why I always say, I don't waste time. It might look to you like I'm wasting time, but I don't waste time. Everything I'm taking you directly to is to become a professional trader. I can open a flow chart and then just show you, okay, press this, be pressing this. Have you pressed it? Press it. I can do it a lot. And we go. The, 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 the advantage or the essence of this thing is that tomorrow you can sit down in your house. You don't need to call me. And you operate from your personal conviction. You know that this thing works. And you can make money with it. I can't, I can't say. You see, I have read many books on trading psychology. Those of you who are there on that channel, on that um, City Forest Resources channel, you will scroll up. You will see, you will see Zen in the market. You will see um, uh, Edwin, Edwin Lavar. What's his name? Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. You will find, oh, there is no book that is important that is not there. You find trading seminar by McDouglas himself, late McDouglas. All his books are there. Audio version, video version, PDF version, they are all there. I bought all those things. Okay? And I read them. I read them. Okay, that's why I always tell you that this thing is not a joke. You go into this university, you read. You go for night class. You write exams. So don't come here and expect anything less. The only advantage you're getting is that I've read all these things and I can pour them out to you and then you, you get the understanding. Okay? So, but those of you who can, can go back and still do your, your research, do your reading, it, it will help you. It will help you. You know, when you operate from abundance, when you operate from abundance, it's easier for you to, you know, tell someone else. Okay, but if uh, you are trying to, maybe you're just gathering information from what I've just said and then you're working with it, it might not be enough. So what I'm, I'm saying now is I am encouraging you to go and read more. There are lots of things that I did not say here that some people will take a whole two hours video, one of my slides here, to teach you. Okay? A whole a two hours video to teach you. Okay, but I believe that um, we're trying our best and then we're trying to meet up with time. See, for us, it's wide. I'm trying to do it in three days. Okay, so you bear with me. And then those of you who can go back and read, go back and read. Trading psychology, do not neglect it. Trading psychology means thinking in probability. Accepting uncertainty. That's the only solution to trading psychology. Accepting that you are not sure if this particular trade will be a winner. You are not sure if it's the next one that will be a winner. So you're, you're operating probabilities, but you know ultimately you will make money. That's trading psychology. So if you, if you I'm, I'm almost through. If you take care of trading psychology, you are a professional trader. There is no group of traders that sit down anywhere and call themselves professionals. 
A professional trader is a trader who thinks in probability. A professional trader is a trader who assesses uncertainty. The day you stop thinking in probabilities, that day you become an amateur again. Okay, so please, it's important. I'm going to show you all these all these three things in detail. Okay, uh, as we go on, I, I I keep on telling you how to you know mitigate your risk, how to trade right, and all of that. Okay, so I'm going to be. This is the basic thing that every guru promises to give to you. Okay, this information, a good trading strategy, how to manage your risk, and then, of course, they talk about trading psychology also, something to help you to trade correctly. Okay. All right, so each trader have his, uh, has his own demon to exercise on his journey to becoming a successful trader. All right, so... You have to decide that you want to be a trader for many years. All right. You have to learn as much as you can. Do not get greedy and rush to trade. Have rush, rush. Okay. Do not get greedy and rush to trade. Develop a method for analyzing the market. All right. Develop a money management plan. I will never, if you like, put a gun on my head. I will never. I am very good and I know what position size to take most of the time. But for the sake of being mechanic, you see, in the medical school, what they do is we, we follow procedures. If you miss one step, you can kill somebody. If you miss one step, it can affect one step, just that you did not place the scissors there. You can, you can kill a patient in the OR. So if it's written on that paper, place the scissors at 14 minutes. You place it there and follow that procedure. You trade mechanically. If I present to you a trading plan or if you develop one tomorrow, follow it. If we say open your calculator and check your risk. If you're going to take 100 trades, open your calculator 100 times. Because familiarity brings uh, 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 content. If you start to trade, you might feel like if you open any chart now, I can tell you what what position. If you if I see your stop loss, I will tell you what lot size to use. Because I've been there for a long time. I've used the calculator for so long, so I can tell you what lot size to use. And if maybe you are risking twenty dollars, to just be maybe nineteen or twenty something dollars, you know. So I can tell you that. But what do I do? If you open my chart, you're going to see that if I'm losing. I don't lose more than 0.75% on any single trade. Why I'm, I'm shouting 2% here is because many of you might want to go live and you have little capital. You're trading millions of dollars. You can't use one, you can't use 2% on a trade. You can't use 2% to find out if you're right or wrong. Use 0.75. If you're right, what do you do? You start to protect your profit. You start to protect your profit. You keep the money. The money is running. That, that thing you are seeing moving, the moment it starts to move in your favor, that money is in your pocket. Treat it like money that is in your account. I protect it. If I sell the trade with five lot size, I'm going to reduce it to two. So that I can keep some part of that money in my bank. Because that thing that, that is going up can go down. Can go down. Will you allow somebody to take your money like that? No. No. Okay, so when you have open positions, you protect it. You protect it. A lot of people see the market rising, and they think it's going to rise forever. And they are waiting so that they can buy a, a Lamborghini. You know? Market turns. I told you, market is never known for its generosity. It moves up and down. That's the way it's designed. It goes up, it goes down. It goes up, it goes down. It might ultimately be going up if you have an uptrend. But it doesn't go straight up or straight down. So it, it toys with your emotion. If you open the lot size that one, you have $100, and your lot size is 0 0.3 or 0 0.2, 
One PIP movement. One PIP movement is worth $2. The market starts to go against you. This is how you just hold yourself like this as it's moving. You you be blowing. <laughs> you 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 carry your phone like this. <laughs> and be pushing it so that it will go down. Okay, so that's how we that's how we know amateurs. All right. They are usually excited when they are making money. And then they are upset when they are losing money. A professional trader does not feel it. I can have a position running as I have. Okay. When I go back and I just look at it. It doesn't affect me. You have to use a, a, a lot size that is I don't care lot size. That's what I call it. And I don't care lot size. A lot size that if, you, if, if it goes in your favor, you don't, you're not worried. That's like you have to trade with rest of mind so that you can live long. You didn't come into this business to kill yourself with hypertension. You have to use this position size. That's why I keep on telling you, trade right. The only problem many traders have is lack of capital. Because if you don't have capital, you can't trade right. Somebody is telling you to use 2% and you have $50 in your account. <laughs> it's like throwing a monkey wrench. I mean, <laughs> into your whole dreams of maybe paying your rent and doing all those things. So what you factor in your problems into the market and you throw it away. Better to take that $100, give it to a prop firm and collect bigger money, trade it and share the profits with them. I'm opening your eyes to a lot of important things. Don't go and put your $100 on your brokerage account. You throw it away. Unless you can discipline yourself to take $1 per trade or $2 per trade, which is rare in a higher time frame. Because if I go to a higher time frame, my PIP or stop loss is high. So if I calculate with my calculator, it I won't be able to take most trades. Except I'm working with a small time frame. Then in, on a small time frame, maybe the entire chart I'm looking at on my phone screen is maybe... 15 pips. Make money somewhere up there. Okay, guys. So, um, uh, yeah, I, this, this is the part where I'm supposed to show you how to predefine your risk, but I think that uh, time is fast spent. So, we can continue tomorrow with a fresh mind. Is that okay? Or you want to you want us to keep pushing? Yes, or tomorrow, right? Okay, is um, we have about five minutes, we, we will not be able to succeed. I said, predefining your risk is I want to make sure that anytime if you have a if you have a one thousand dollar in your account, anytime you are taking a trade, you take two percent, which is twenty dollars. Each time you open a two dollar trade, I mean a two percent trade, or if I look at your trading history. I'm not going to see any loss that is more than $20. That's what it means to predefine your risk. So it's possible. If you look at the way the market is, there's no, there's no way you can say, I want to buy or sell with $20. Hmm? You can't just open the trade and say, I, I want it to be $20. You have to calculate it. That my, this is, you choose by yourself. You know, this is where gamblers have advantage. From the beginning of the gamble, you would know how much you want to lose. Is it not? From the starting point, you already know that I'm going to lose this 10,000 naira. But in trading, it's different. You don't know how much you, you want to lose. Do you know that that stop loss you put, where you say where the market gets to and is going against you, you should knock you off, right? You can move it down. Do you know? When you open an order, it's an order. You tell your broker, if the price gets to this place, take away the loss. Let me look for other opportunities. But some traders will adjust that order so that they keep sustaining, they, they keep hoping that market goes up and down and it will go. Hmm, it doesn't go. It's a bad habit. It's a very bad habit. If you know that 
this level of stop from the beginning, you don't like it. You, there is no, I'm going to teach you how to play stops. You don't put stop unless your strategy tells you that this is a, a point of invalidation. There has to be a point of invalidation. There has to be something that you know that the big banks are going to defend. Invalidation point. This is key. Go to the YouTube. They will tell you about this thing. Invalidation point is the point where you're, if you design a strategy and you're placing a stop and there's no invalidation point, you are doing nonsense. Because invalidation is where you now tell yourself that if the market ever comes to so, so, so price, it means that my, my reason for being in this market is wrong. It has been scattered. Because if I am right, the market is not supposed to get to this place. So you take the loss of one, two percent and go away. So where a lot of traders hold on to bad trades is that there is, they don't have an invalidation point. They have opened their trade just because, okay, they've told us to put stops. I just want to put my stop somewhere here. When the market starts to come down, they push the stop lower. That thing is showing red. I don't like to see red. It irritates me. I don't, I, I don't, I avoid red. So if the if there are five case scenarios I'm going to show you. There are trades you take, they move immediately. There are trades you take, they are sluggish. There are trades you take, they go down and reverse. There are trades you take, I'll show you all those things and I'll show you how to manage all those five case scenarios. Now, in designing your strategy, make sure you have an invalidation point. That's going to save you. A lot of people trade Gatley and harmonic patterns because there is, a, there is a point where that Fibonacci level, if the market has exceeds it, is, the pattern has spoiled. It's like drawing a shape. Eh? It's like drawing a shape with the market candle. And then you're now telling yourself that if this market now changes to this shape it means that it's wrong obviously so they will leave the market they're not trading it again does it make sense they have an, in, in, an invalidation point simple they don't they don't they don't they don't try to make anything they don't try to be smart if the, if you And it works sometimes. It goes. That little pattern. That little two, two, two. It goes. Okay, and then what if it comes to that point? You already have your stop loss. You, they, they, that place is called PRZ, price reversal zone. If the market gets to the price reversal zone, that's where it's supposed to reverse from. And then you're supposed to be triggered. And then you, you allow some buffer. If the market exceeds that place, it's, 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 it's gone. The trade is bad. It's among the 40% or 30% that is the body. You go to the next chart and look for, the, 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 look for another setup. Okay. So tomorrow I'll show you how to make sure. Tomorrow morning we start by uh, me showing you how to make sure that when you lose your trade, you don't lose more than the amount you want to lose. Okay. You don't lose more than the amount you want. You just... There's no, I, I won't calculate anything at all. I'll just show you your calculator. Okay, so you understand the principles. And then you can work with that. Okay, and then uh, those of you that are, are at home that are following us, uh, if you have questions, you can drop them on the group. Okay, so that I will attend to them. And then, guys, if you have any question here, please let's tackle it. Based on what we have said, do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay.
Yeah, okay, let me take it one by one so that I don't have um, uh, confusion with all the questions and then so that we don't repeat questions that have been asked. Okay, so the, there is always a way, there's a benchmark, like you have said. In fact, there is something we call average true range. For every currency pair, this is the range of movement that we don't expect it to exceed in a day. So we know that, okay, this is the size of a daily candle. So the ACR says that it's not supposed to exceed. I told you there are some that move as much as 140. There are some that cannot exceed 70. So when you're trading that kind of market, it's stupid for you to think that the market is going to get to 100 or 150. Because normally you will not, right? So we work with what works or what we have. History, right? We work with history. So there is a benchmark, and then usually it's your strategy that will tell you this benchmark. Okay, so it's not even by looking at the price and saying, okay, it doesn't. So your strategy will tell you, okay, if it exceeds this level, then take me out. I, I, I'm not interested in this one. There are, there are many trades. And then don't try to revenge. Because if a trade, if a trade doesn't work out, the next one, if this one made you to bleed, the next one can heal you. It mustn't be the one that made you bleed that should heal you. There are many opportunities. There are many charts. Okay. Also, uh, the second question you said, how much? Now, anything below, I frown at anything below 1,000. Whether dollar and naira anything below 1000 okay because i believe that there is almost no chart and trade and time frame that you can take that will not allow you to take as much as 20 dollars or 20 cents per trade i don't know if you get what i'm trying to say here so if you if you if you take a 100 dollar account you can you you need 20 dollars to trade a certain time frame so it won't work so it's better you take, let's say, $10 for the sake of practice now, because that's, that's, another, that's another part of that question. For the sake of practice, that's what I'm answering. For the sake of practice, it's better you take $10, which is about 4,600, deposit it, change it to the dollar, and then get a cent account. You can do that on FXTN. So we're going to drop the link on that group for you to sign up. Okay. So you create your account today so that tomorrow when we come, you already have a brokerage account. And then if you want to put $10 in it, you can. If not, you don't need to put that money in it. You can get a demo account. Demo is paper money. Okay, so you trade with that. All right, but I me, I personally, it doesn't change anything though, but I have never done demo trading before. From day one, let me tell you how I started. I invest a lot in BTC. I opened it one day and there were thousands in it. I pulled out part of it and started trading. 
Okay, I started trading. So I was trading money away, of course. All right. So you can start with paper money. Most of my students begin with paper money. Some of them begin with cents. It's okay. All right. So, but the, the advantage of cents is that you won't leave it and go and drink beer. Okay, you keep an eye on it. Because you know it's your money that is running. All right. And then it, another difference again is, I, like I, I told you, those of you that came around, if you are trading paper money, you have nothing to lose. So you don't implement your, your strategy correctly. You're trading real money, you have something to lose. You are struggling with all the things that are fighting back at you. Not losing, wanting to make more money, all these things are fighting back at you. And they are affecting your trading decisions on each trade. Okay, so if you can go live with cents, it's okay. Very okay. All right, so you can have a 1,000 cents with a $10. All right, 1,000 cents. 1,000 cents allows you to take each trade 20 cents per trade. That is 2% of your account size. You can take 10 cents per trade. But you're not looking to make profits here. You're looking to build a track record. Do you understand what I'm saying now? You're looking to build a track record. You're not looking to multiply the money. Okay, so you're going to make sure that any, once you press your calculator, you're telling your calculator that I want to lose just, you know, 2% um, of my 1,000 cents. So for the sake of practice, that's what I'm saying. Then if you have enough money, you can put $1,000. Okay, and then trade $20 per trade. That is my honest re recommendation. That's my honest recommendation. Don't use 100 because you can't trigger many trades correctly with 2%. There are a lot of memes about those who have $100 accounts. They are all true. You can't be expecting to make money and then you have $100 in your account. You can't, you can't make more money with that. Okay. So that being said, if you're looking to make money, that is a personal thing. You can put in 1 million naira in your account converted to dollars and you trade with it. If your ROI for that month is okay for you, that's fine. You can put in 500,000 and trade with it. But don't try it unless you have defined your edge. You open your chart, you recognize your edge. You see it, you trade it. You, you have trained yourself to the point where you are not afraid to make any trading decision anymore. Right? So when you have gotten to this point, put in real money, you make money. I'm not joking. You make a lot of money. If you're aggressive, you make more money. If you're aggressive, you take as much as 3% per trade, you make more money. What if you are, you, are, you are aggressive and you have taken many trades on the lower time frame? You will make more money. But the problem is that your brain starts to become dull. And it affects your trading decision. So if you go to a lower time frame, it affects you. If you go to a lower time frame, it might affect you. Your first two, three trades, you might follow the setup correctly. But as time begins to go, you begin to get, you know, dull. And then you might not trade correctly anymore. Okay, so that's why I don't advise you to go to use the lower time frame unless you have been trading as a swing trader for at least 18 months. At least 18 months. Before you open a five-minute chart or a one-minute chart and try to scalp. There are different types of traders. There are scalpers. Scalpers will open a trade and they can flip money in a few minutes. They are trading with a one-minute time frame. They are trading with a 30 seconds time frame. One can do, as it moves three, four, five pips, they are out. Two, four, five, they are out. Ten pips, they are out. Those are scalpers. What about swing traders? Swing traders will keep it and go their way. Come back after work, look at it. Okay, so they are looking to make about 30 pips, 40 pips, 50 pips, and more. There's the position traders. These people are more like investors. Hold it and go away. They are intraday traders. These are people that they will open their trade today and close it that same day. Open it in the morning and close it late, maybe during New York session or later. Stop loss. 
scalp. They are, no, they are, not, they are not necessarily scalpers. Scalpers is they sit in front of this, the screen. They are watching it. As the candle is forming, they are making their trading decisions. So, but an intraday trader doesn't need to do that. He can stay there, use a maybe five minutes or 15 minutes time frame and go away, come back in the afternoon and check it. As opposed to a scalper who needs to watch. So that's an intraday trader. So they open their trades that day and close it that day. Okay. So, and do they make money every day? No. There are some days you buy well, buy data, open your computer, trade from morning to night, and you will not make money. Intraday. Okay. And then, can it happen the next day? Yes. Can it happen again? Yes. But can it happen that way for 20 working days? No. No. It can. I bet you it can. That same person that lost three times in a row can make profit for 10 times in a row. There's a, there's a month where we, we try to give our investors 30% because we need a heap of money that month. That period of the COVID, when the outbreak started, market was running. Market was running. Crude fell to pieces. One barrel of crude was worth less than one tissue paper. It fell to pieces, minus. Open your chart and look at crude. Around COVID. The market moved. That thing I told you that stops at 140. It went as far as 1,000 during COVID. And then why do we were crying? We're making it for money. Okay, so I, I always tell you, do something that takes you out of the economy of wherever you are. Okay, you can't depend on the economy of the state where you are living. You can't. All right, guys. So again, I am Pete Sojourn, and I really want to appreciate your patience today and the time and then your active participation in the class is encouraging, all right, because I like to teach and I like to see people who are also willing to receive the information, all right? Okay, you still have questions. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah give me the question. Let's go. There's no best time frame. You just, what you need to know is who you are because... I, I told you that there are different, there are four kinds of traders. There is a scalper. If you're a scalper, you trade a five minute time frame or a one minute time frame or even a 10 seconds time frame. Coming quickly and you're trading quickly and you go away. So it, it depends on if you have ample time, you can take a one hour time frame. One candle, it will take one whole hour for one candle to form. So you can sit down, make your trading decision, close it and go away. So there is no perfect time, time frame. The only thing I can advise you is the lesser the, the time frame, the, the, the more porous or weak your decision is. If I, if I sit down and I analyze the daily chart, I will hardly lose it. If I sit down and I analyze H4, I will hardly lose it. H1, hardly lose it. But what if I start to make these same decisions five, five minutes? You, you have a lot. You pick, the, it's called cherry picking. You pick a lot of bad cherries. And then overall, you see that you are losing money. So somebody who used H4 time frame made money. But because you are trading, you lose money. So if your brain can work with it, okay but if not man don't do it the the goal of of this whole thing is to make money so you got to know know yourself man know thyself so whatever works for you there's no i can't tell you this is an appropriate time frame i can only tell you okay, this is what happens on all time frames what happens okay and then you're trading your trading strategy too okay you can have a trading strategy that says time frame equal to h1 that's your trading strategy because you feel that you have done a back test and it works well on H1 time frame. But if I open a H1 time frame or a five minute time frame or a monthly time frame, you wouldn't know the difference. If I don't show you the time and I open the chart for you, look at your phone, change the time frame. There's no difference. All the, the whole candle, are all, they are all the same. There's no difference, right? The benefit of, of, of robotic trading is that a robot will pick up the instruction 
and execute all these things that we are struggling to execute without sight. If you tell a robot, anytime you see A plus B, buy it, it will buy. If that A plus B appears 100 times, it will buy it, it will trigger 100 times. It is a mechanic trader. It is a robot. Some, some psychologists will tell you to trade like a computer, trade like, execute like a robot. Don't check your boxes and tick. Check your boxes and uh, trade, rather. Check your boxes and trade. Check your boxes and trade. Like that, like a robot. Okay, so a robot have that advantage of not dealing with emotions. So when he sees your trading plan, it will trigger it. But now this is the downside of a, of a robot. The, the robot does not know the condition of the market. So if I'm, if I'm running an EA, that's what robots are called, on my MT4, I connect the way your phone is now. You can connect an EA or need. It's not a physical thing you connect to. You can program uh, and then connect your login details to it. It will start to trigger trades on that account for you. Okay. Now, when you do that, you just see that your account is increasing and decreasing depending on the outcome of the trades that the robot is taking. Now, if the market is going in a particular, you know, trend, it might be making money for you. But when that thing starts to become a trading range, it can lose all those money that's made for you and more. You see, you see one thing I, I will tell you. This is this is for inside information now. If robots can generate income consistently for a long time, the banks have money, they'll buy robots. They won't pay traders to trade for them. I'm talking about big banks, I'm talking about the giants, city banks. These guys have money. But if you go there, you see their trading. Have you seen the trading floor before? Thousands of traders buying and selling Euro GBP. Why? Why don't they put a robot to play the thing? Okay, so there are, there are rational decisions that you can make by looking at the chart. That's the advantage you have over a robot. What we use robots to do in a bank is to mitigate risk. Robot will play out to tell you, okay, this is a lot size to use. That's what you use a robot for. Don't use a robot to tell it to take trade. Okay, they've tried to replace human doctors with machines, but it's not possible. There's a human being that has to stay there to know that this person is in pain. The machines and they won't know. Okay, so there's a limitation. There's a limit to it. A lot of people I know that have bought all these guys. And guys, it's going to be difficult for you to get. I think I, I, I relate with most of the best traders. I, I'm not saying that all. I mean, but majority of the good traders I know don't use robots. And then we, we I know the best traders around. But I call Abuja, Lagos. These are where you have most of the best traders. And I know them. Anybody who tries to give you robot in this Lagos, in this Nigeria, look at that robot again. It might work small, but you lose money. It might work on paper money. You lose money. I know what I'm saying. It might work on paper money. But when you put in your $1,000 and it starts to work, you see that you won't make money. Solution to all of this is to manage your risk. Just manage your risk. You make money. Because most people who go for those robots, they will promise you that the robot can make 50% or 100% in a month. And then you buy it. It will also lose that amount in a month. Okay, hey guys. Any other question? Any other question? Okay, if there's no question. What makes what makes it to move? And is the market that is, that is moving. It's not there's no mystical power that makes it move. What makes it move is let's say that Japan wants to ship cars from Japan to America. They ship fleets of cars. Now, when they do this, they will pay for it, Abi. That money enters into the forex market. It makes the market to move. Yes, the transaction on that currency. 
makes it to move. The economy of the state makes it to move. If all this, if everybody here buys GBP, buys GBP, buys GBP, GBP starts to appreciate. Because if I buy at 110, you buy at, you won't meet 110 again. You come and meet 111. Next person who wants to buy will meet 112. I bought at 109. It's now 112. I'm in profit. It's not possible. A lot of people buy into that garbage. It's not possible. It's not possible. See, it is possible for them to, to say, okay, we want to, but the forex market is so large that you can't do it. You can do it in stocks. The owner of the company can change something. And the market in stocks will depreciate. Apple can go crazy and introduce finger buttons and people stop using Apple phones. It happens to Blackberry. What happens? The stock crashes. Can it happen in forex market? No. Because it's a pool of cash. You can't you can manipulate it easily. It's possible, but not easy. There is always this, you know, hunting that goes on, but just follow your trading plan. That's all. Just follow your trading plan. Okay. All right, thank you for your questions. They are intelligent indeed. Okay, so um, I want to say a big thank you. Okay, these pen are for you. Um, guys, I don't know. Come on. Okay, so that we can say the pre uh, closing prayer and then go home. Uh, please, I, I don't know who was the first person to get here. The first person. Without argument, right? Is the first person. Okay, so uh, please, this is for you. Okay, that is our branded shirt. All right, so please, guys, I am really grateful for your participation and for coming around. Okay, there are lots of people that want to be here, but they are not even privileged to be here. And I know it's going to be really difficult for them to follow very well. Okay, so we still thank God for the opportunity we have to be here. We're going to continue like this tomorrow. We're going to start immediately. It is um, 11, okay? So that before one, we have left. Tomorrow, we have a target. We're entering the markets tomorrow. Okay, so I'm going to show you basics of technical analysis. And then we enter the market with a simple strategy. Because tomorrow is Friday, I want us to buy and sell tomorrow. Because on Saturday, the market will be closed. So by Saturday, what we're going to do is to cement everything. All right? Then in the subsequent classes, I'll be teaching you different topics. There are different things that you can use to improve your A plus B equals C. So I'll be teaching you all those things, you know, so that, you know, you open your eyes more. All right? If you look at the chat, you will not see anything unless somebody points it out to you. Look at the chat. You, you, you won't notice anything, you know, unless somebody comes and tells you. All right, so can somebody pray for us so that we can close this meeting today? Okay, somebody should pray. Abi, are we pagans? You people don't go to church anymore because they close church for how many months? So we are now used to using our phone to to go to church, eh? Yeah, let's pray. Let's acknowledge God. It's God's doing. I mean. Amen. Thank you for the man you have been today to give us praise. I pray that.